Hi there. My name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. I would like to end this section of EC 2026 Introduction to Signal Processing on Sampling with a question. If you sample a periodic continuous time signal, is the sampled sequence also periodic? Let's consider two signals. The first has a frequency of 20 hertz. The second has a frequency of 22 hertz. And we're going to sample both of them at 100 samples per second. This gives us one sampled sequence with a digital frequency of 0.4 pi and another with a digital frequency of 0.44 pi. The sampled sequence for the 20 hertz signal looks like this. And it's pretty easy to see that there's this replicated section here. So this section here looks like this section here. And we have a period of five samples. And this makes sense. I have 0.05 seconds per period. And if I multiply that by the sample rate, which is samples per second, then this seconds here cancels with this seconds here. And I wind up with something in units of samples per period. And if we use an ideal band-limited interpolation procedure on the sequence, we will get our original periodic signal back. What about the second sequence? To be clear, if we apply an ideal band-limit interpolation procedure to the sequence, we will get a 22 hertz signal out. But even though I see the overall shape of a sine wave in here, something more complicated is going on. This little peak here does not look like this peak here. It looks a little bit more like this peak here, but on this one, the first one's higher, and on this one, the second one is higher. So something more complicated is going on. So it's definitely not periodic with a period of five samples. But the question is, is it periodic at all, maybe with a longer period? Let's focus on this first signal, this 20 hertz signal, a little bit. If I think about the discrete time sequence, OK, x of 0, I plug in 0 for n. This is 0, and I wind up with 0.1. What if I plug in 5? Let's see, 0.4 pi times 5 would be 2 pi. And remember, I can add or subtract multiples of 2 pi in a cosine, and I get the same thing. So it's the same thing as x15 or x110, et cetera, et cetera. So x1 is periodic with a period of five samples. And if we multiply the number of samples per period times the sampling period, and we're using period in two different ways there, we wind up with the period of the original continuous time wave. So yeah, this equation has three different uses of the word period, which is a bit confusing. The sample period here is 0.01 seconds per sample. That's one over the sample rate. And when we multiply that by five samples, we wind up with 0.05 seconds. OK, what about that second example, this 22 hertz signal that we're sampling at 100 samples per second? The period of the signal is 0.04545 forever and forever. This underscore here means that this 45 repeats. We're sampling at 100 samples per second. If an original continuous time period is this 0.04545, et cetera, et cetera, seconds long, and I want to figure out how many samples are in one of those periods, well, if I multiply this 100 by this, I wind up with 4.545, et cetera, et cetera. But that's not an integer. And if I'm thinking about a discrete time sequence being periodic, that period needs to be an integer. So we need to dig into this a little more. I need to think about plugging in an n plus capital N naught for the little n here. And then imagine taking this 0.44 pi and multiplying it through. And then I think, OK, that 0.44 pi times n naught, I want that to be a multiple of 2 pi. Let's take this 0.44 pi and write it as 44 pi over 100. I could simplify that down to 11 pi over 25. And notice, if I multiply the numerator and the denominator here by 2, I can write this as 2 pi times 11 over 50. 
aha, this here is a multiple of 2 pi, 11 times 2 pi. So this 50 here, that is my n naught. That's my period for my discrete time sequence. So the sequence is periodic, but it has a period of 50 samples. So our sense of periodicity in the discrete time domain, if we have it, doesn't necessarily correspond to our sense of periodicity in the continuous time domain. But you need not fret. Again, if we apply our ideal band-limited reconstruction formula to the signal, you will get a 22 hertz sinusoid out with this period. Okay, let's generalize this concept. Suppose you have a sinusoid with a period of capital T naught, equivalently a frequency of F naught, and you sample it at a rate Fs. The resulting sampled sequence is going to be periodic if the sample rate is the frequency of the signal times a rational number. And the period of that sampled sequence is the sample rate divided by the greatest common divisor of the frequency of the signal and the sample rate. Now, this GCD is not the usual greatest common divisor. It's a generalized GCD that we introduced in the lecture where we discussed periodic signals. The GCD here doesn't have to be an integer. Now, imagine multiplying everything in this expression by 2 pi to put it in omega land in units of radians per second, and then imagine dividing by the sample rate to put it in omega hat land. So this gives us an expression for n naught in terms of the digital frequency omega naught hat. For instance, suppose I have a signal with a frequency of 2.2 hertz, and we sample it at a rate of 20 samples per second. The GCD of 2.2 and 20 is 0.02. If I take 0.2 and multiply it by 11, I get F naught. If I take 0.2 and multiply it by 100, I get Fs. And we can find the period of the sampled signal by using this formula here. The sample rate is 20, our GCD is 0.2. So this will have a period of 100 samples in the discrete time domain. Now, what if I instead took this sample rate and multiplied it by the square root of 2? So I sample it at 20 square root of 2 samples per second. Well, then the sampled sequence isn't periodic at all. But if I run that sampled sequence through an ideal band-limited reconstruction process, it would reconstruct my original signal with a period of 2.2 hertz, even though the sampled sequence isn't periodic at all. Now, the simplest case is if m, the denominator here, is equal to 1, and you just sample at an integer multiple of the frequency of the signal, and then that integer is just the period of the sampled sequence and not. Let's look at an example with a sum of two sinusoids. One of these sinusoids has a frequency of 21 hertz, and the other has a frequency of 9 hertz. The GCD of 21 and 9 is 3, so the overall signal has a period of 3 hertz. To make life easy, let's sample it at 16 times the fundamental frequency. So that's 16 times 3, which is 48 samples per second. To create the sampled signal, I plug in n divided by 48 for t which gives me this expression here. Notice I have a digital frequency here of 7 over 8 pi and a digital frequency here of 3 over 8 pi. Now, for a moment, forget all about this stuff up here. Imagine I'm just looking at the signal. I could ask, is the signal periodic? Well, I would find the greatest common divisor of 7 pi over 8 and 3 pi over 8, which is just pi over 8, or 2 pi over 16. So the period of the signal is 16, which in retrospect corresponds to our choice of 16 up here. So our period in the discrete time domain is 16. On the top here, we've plotted the spectrum of the original continuous time signal. Notice that our frequency axis here is in hertz. So I have a line at 9 and 21, and I have the corresponding complex conjugate lines. Remember, when we go from this cosine form into the complex sinusoid form, we use four two-sided spectra, 
we need to divide by 2. And the j here comes from this phase of 0.5 pi. So in the lower graph here, we can plot the sampled spectrum. Wherever the sample rate lands in the original continuous time plot corresponds to 2 pi in omega hat land. But remember that there are going to be aliases going either direction infinitely far. For instance, the spectral line at minus 7 pi is going to have an alias at plus 2 above that. Now let's return to that earlier example where we had a 22 hertz sinusoid being sampled at 100 samples per second. The discrete time spectrum looks like this. Remember we take the amplitude and divide by 2, and the point 0.1 here turns into the point 0.1 here. We have this conjugate symmetry, and of course there's actually an infinite number of aliases going either direction. If we want to find out the period of this discrete time sequence, we can use this formula. The GCD of 0.44 pi and 2 pi is 0.04 pi. And let's check that. 2 divided by 0.04 is 50, and 0.44 divided by 0.04 is 11. So that checks out. To get the period, we take 2 pi and divide it by that greatest common divisor, which gives us a period of 50 samples. So there you go. Notice we could have asked the question, what is the period of this discrete time sequence? completely independent of the question about whether it had been sampled from some original continuous time signal. So to review, if you're sampling a continuous time signal with a fundamental frequency f0, your sampled sequence will be periodic if your sample rate is the frequency of the signal times a ratio of integers. And you can figure out the period of that sequence using two formulas. This formula involving the frequency of that continuous time signal and the sample rate is convenient if you're thinking about designing system sampling continuous time signals. But you could also use this formula here, and this formula is particularly handy if you're not even thinking about a continuous time signal and you're starting from the standpoint of thinking about a discrete time signal.